Praise the Lord. World exploration is one of the greatest adventures in life because there are hidden treasures in the book. And these treasures are ordained to add value to us. I pray that the exploration tonight will lead to massive transformation. Amen. All across the world, wherever you are hooked on to this service, stay focused. In every prophetic service, there is always a catch-up moment. A word you hear that lives with you for life. They call it encounters. Some you don't have to crack your brain to remember when. It's always as yesterday because of the source where it's coming from, from heaven. You can't encounter anything from heaven and forget in a hurry. That's the kind of encounter you will have here Amen. tonight in the name of Jesus. Amen. Life is an adventure and opportunities. You've been here tonight, wherever you may be around the world, it's an opportunity offered you by God to see what you will do with it. For blessed is the man whom thou choosest, and whom thou causest to approach unto you, that you may dwell in thy courts, and they shall be satisfied with the goodness of thy house, even of thy holy temple. May your presence here tonight turn some amazing things out of your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. The Englishman will say, opportunity once lost may never be regained. Well, let's bring it down to this. Today is 18th of June, 2020. Another one will never come to the end of time. The next June 18 will not be 2020. It will be 2021. <laughs> opportunity once lost can never be regained. No matter how you don't feel like, next year is 2021. No matter how you reject it, last year was 2019. If you write 2013 in your note, it doesn't make a difference. It's 2019. That's why everybody should be sensitive to every opportunity presented such individuals by God so as to make the most of it. Glory to God. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. Tonight will be a night you will not forget in a hurry. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Father, thank you. Amen. Grant everyone here tonight an encounter of a lifetime. Amen. Let it be such an encounter that no one will forget in a hurry. Amen. Let everyone that is connected to this service to, tonight have a story to tell. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. so shall it be. Amen. He says, set yourself and you will see the salvation of your God. So, so you don't just have to be there, be set to see. Be set to see what he will say unto you. Be set. When you are set, you have committed him to show. You are not said, you can't see. May each one under the sound of my voice tonight be truly said for an encounter with God in the name of Jesus Christ. It's my year of breaking limit. Please get seated. I'll be speaking to a subject of great importance tonight. Understanding the times and seasons. 
life is segmented in times and seasons. It's understanding of these times and engaging with it that gives each one his place in destiny. I've said this over and again, but let's get back to it. Truth is timeless. Truth is ageless. Truth is constant. If there's any generation of people that should be made to rehearse this over and again, they're the youth. Truth cannot grow. We can only grow in the knowledge of the truth. Truth cannot be developed. We can only develop our understanding of the truth. If therefore the word of God is truth, or the truth, then the truth of scriptures must be timeless, ageless, and constant. What that means is this, there is no new generation truth. What is said to be bad in the Bible, the date was written, is bad today and will still be bad tomorrow. What is commanded to obey yesterday is the same that holds today and the same remains relevant tomorrow. There is no old-fashioned truth. Truth is transgenerational. As long as the sun and the moon remain in the skies, every covenant of God with his people as contained in the scriptures remains intact. There will not be a new edition Bible. You either agree with this or you have somewhere else you are going. There is no old-fashioned truth. Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 20 and 21. Thus says the Lord, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne. And with the Levites, that's where we come in, the priests, my ministers, and we have all been redeemed as priests and kings so we can reign on the earth. So every child of God has his place in that scripture. That every covenant of scriptures remains in force as long as the day and the night keeps exchanging position. Heaven and earth may pass away, he said. Not a jot of my word will go unfulfilled. My word shall not pass away. There is no private or there are no private revelations. Every revelation of the truth applies to whosoever is interested. No scriptures is of any private interpretation. <laughs> so every revelation of scriptures is applicable to whosoever is interested. Therefore, truth is truth. Take it or leave it. For we can do nothing against the truth, but for the truth. What God says to one, he says to all. Every truth of scriptures is valid for all times, but only applicable to whosoever believes. Because the word of God lives and abides forever. Forever. What if they believe not? Yet he abides faithful. He cannot deny himself. Mm -hmm. 
Let me pause at this point. Every testimony is a raw interpretation of the truth. Every testimony is God confirming his word to be the truth. <laughs> That's why testimonies are pointers to our heritage. Psalm 119 verse 111. The testimony is, have I taken as an heritage forever and they are the rejoicing of my heart. Nothing interprets the truth like testimonies. All his garments were smelling of cashew and aloes out of the every palaces. Yes. One woman caught it and touched the hem of his garment and was made whole. From that time on, everybody was running to touch his garment. As many as touched him, chapter 14 of Matthew, were made perfectly whole. Testimonies help to interpret that Psalm 45 how the garment of Jesus was smelling. The unction was flowing through his garments. That was the raw interpretation of it. Praise God. Praise God. I got the interpretation of far above from the testimony of Smith Wigglesworth. I've been reading far above, but it didn't impart on my life as I saw him until I saw him snuff the devil and went to bed and woke up in the morning. Far above drama. <laughs> Far above. That's why I said to the law and to the testimony that interprets the law, if they speak not according to this word, it's because there is no light in them. Isaiah 8 and verse 20. No new generation truth. For example, no one can be saved without repentance. That's forever. You can't be saved by just going to church. <laughs> you repent and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you are saved. Amen. Church membership will never be equal to salvation. No one can prosper without being a giver, no matter how smart it may appear to be. You know, my daughter and Kichi, um, small girl. She wasn't married then. Knew how to budget her income. 20%, 5%, 3%, 10%. Just jumping up, just killing heights. Just killing heights. I went to a testimony she had a 2-2 from University of Portacourt. And now a facilitator in Harvard. And now listed as a global something, 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 and then everywhere. Everywhere. On top of it, she's married. She stopped earning in the longest time. <laughs> By her practical, raw covenant engagement. No one can command the supernatural without being on the go for Jesus. You want to see the supernatural? He said it follows. He doesn't see to people, it follows. These signs shall follow them that are on the go. <laughs> you want to see the supernatural in action? Then be on the go. You are not on the go. You'll be entertained by the supernatural as happening through the lives of others. You'll just be entertained by it. Glory to God. <laughs> Amen. That we more, with all boldness you may speak your word. And that signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child Jesus as we go forth with your word. It follows. These signs shall follow them that believe. 
You can't be in command of science without being on the go. God is not a magician. <laughs> He's been on the go that puts in command of the supernatural. Being on the go. And that keeps on benefiting you in person. Because the husband man that labor must be forced to partake of the fruit. So when you are in the go, your command level is changing as you keep going. And then you are a beneficiary of it because it's flowing through you. For instance, no one can remain empowered without subscribing to the demand of prayer and fasting. <laughs> Amen. My soul thirsted for thee, and my flesh longed for thee. In a giant land, to see thy power and thy glory, even as I saw it before. I need to see it again. So I have to go through the same process. Amen. The same process of a thirsty soul and a longing flesh. There is no software for that. You can program a fast. Yes, I fasted now seven days. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, the stuff here is very good. Yes, my fast is now 32 days, remaining only eight. <laughs> On your desk. <laughs> the same day. You now enter into another higher code. I was to stop at 40. It has gone to 41. <laughs> <laughs> you, you can't see or smell the power of God without subscribing to the demand of prayer and fasting. Is this not the fast that I've chosen? What about to empower you into next levels? So you can break every yoke. You better gather this now, like that presentation from Ibadan. You better gather this now before rough days will come. And say, I have no pleasure in this. I've seen a bit of God that there is no demon or courtly power that can lure me. Not one, they can't even talk to me. You know, there is a way you sit down and they know they can't talk to you. That are you considering this cult? They know they can't. Because the mouth you used to say is the last time you will talk. <laughs> last time. <laughs> Amen. If the head of the court sent you, say, sir, I think we need to go there yourself. The way is all the man. Praise God. Amen. So the, the deeper your walk with God today, the more secure your tomorrow. You, you don't toy with this time. It won't come twice. Amen. You can't be 20 years old twice. You can't be 30 years old twice. Whether you're interested or not, the, the clock is ticking. No one can be healed without his faith. <laughs> Jesus couldn't use his faith to heal them in Nazareth. So you need your faith to secure your health. Thy faith has made thee whole. You believe that I'm able to do this? Now get it according to your faith. So you are only healed according to your faith. Making kingdom advancement and devil one's lifestyle is the master key to a life of all and fulfillment. Now we are coming to where we are going. Don't hang on your parents' stand. It can't stand the test of time. You must enter into that covenant as a person. And I'll tell you why. From 20 years and above, the word of God makes you absolutely responsible for the affairs of your life. Up, there is no parent to blame. There is no father or mother to blame. There is no friend to blame.
That's why there is need to wake up. There are two sensitive seasons in life. The first is between 20 and 30. Now I'm speaking to you. The second is between 30 and 50. The first is between 20 and 30. And the next is between 30 and 50. Numbers chapter 1, we have a catalog of these um, 20 years old and upward. You have it about 10, 11 times here. 20 years old and all that are able to go forth to war. All 20 years and above. I did that study in 1992. It was an awesome excitement. <laughs> That's when you are enlisted into the race of life. From that time on, you either take responsibility for where your life is heading or end up a liability. So we have it recording all through that chapter one. They assembled them, all of them, from 20 years old and upward by their poles. 20 years old and upward. 20 years old and upward. 20 years old and upward. Where you are heading will be clear, or you are heading nowhere. He said in Joel chapter 2, your young men shall see visions. It's your season of positioning for exploits in life. After you young men, because you are strong, 1 John 2, 14. And those who do know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. I've written to you young men because you are strong <laughs> and the word of God abides in you, and ye have overcome the wicked one. And the end product of strength is exploit. Amen. The eagles have remained the king of the air by reason of supernatural strength. So they that wait upon the Lord shall be, uh, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Praise God. And they shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the age. This is the season. This we are to build strength for the time to come. Please stay awake. Wherever you may be in the world, you miss your planting season. You have lost the harvest. For everything, there's a time and a season. For every purpose upon the earth, there's a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which was planted. That's what between 20 and 30 does. It's your great planting season that defines the color of your harvest season. Amen. 
You see that my young son in uh, Nairobi, at the age of 24, age of 24, I would like you to read that before I close this charge. 24. Just dive into everything that God says. Just coming out of the university. And when he grant, in the midst of COVID-19 challenge, design a package that delivers food at your place. You don't need to go around. Twenty-four year old. You saw the young man too, that thirty-five year old, that went for a consultancy, an international consultancy um, interview. Someone there gra graduated from the university the year he was born. Amen. The year he was born, he was the one they gave it to, because we are in the age where a child shall lead them. Isaiah chapter eleven verse six: A child shall lead them by taking responsibility of men responsibility of man. So David took responsibility that his elder brothers would not take, so he marched their king. He marched their king. Is, are these all the sons who are, well, there is one that's keeping the ship. He's not a candidate. He doesn't look anything. You know, when he comes and you see him throwing the sling and then uh, playing harp, is that a king? He said, that's the king. The one that took responsibility is the king. The one that took responsibility is a king. The one that took responsibility is a king. The one that took responsibility is a king. That's what happens. We are in the days of a child shall lead them. So I see an army of giants emerging from you by taking gigantic scriptural responsibility. Gigantic covenant responsibility by taking gigantic covenant responsibility. That's how to get there. Now, between 30 and 50, we have that catalog in chapter 4. Of numbers. Between 30 years old and 50, shall thou number them that do the service, do the work of the tabernacle of the congregation? Between 30 years old and upward, even unto 50 years, even unto 50 years, that's where your investment between 20 and 30 begins to yield results. You are now being counted. You are not lost in the crowd. You are generating proofs, pay certain proofs of your continuing quality investment in the race of life. Yes, we have a number of stars that emerge from 20 to 30, but a lot emerge from between 30 and 50. Don't forget, Joseph began to reign at 30. Genesis 41 and verse 46. Amen. And Joseph was 30 years old when he stood before Pharaoh, king of Egypt. But what? He won't toil with sin. There was no error in his stewardship. He didn't steal Potiphar's resources. He was in the prison, a dignified prisoner, full of integrity, carries God's presence. Amen. He was so into slavery at 17. He went through various ordeals between 17 and 30. But at 30, the king of him emerged. Amen. So how well we take responsibility now is what defines how quickly our impact begins to manifest. Now, David <laughs> was anointed king at 17. The king begged for him to come and stay in his house. So they 
he went to Paul's, uh, Saul's, was it, is this Saul? Saul's house, and then uh, the father sent for him that he should go and give food to his brethren on the field, responsible. So he went there. Praise God. He took responsibility to remove the reproach from Israel. At 17, he took responsibility with his life in his arm. He wasn't a baby that on this petting and patting and say, have you woken up? Did you wake up? At 17. Then Saul cast his eyes on him to kill him. You see how covenant minded this man was? He had the opportunity to pin Saul down in the hole. He said, God forbid that I shall to lay my hands upon God's anointed. He's, he's, security man said, ah, ah, this is covenant madness. <laughs> Someone is pursuing you to kill you. Now you have the opportunity. He said, no, I want. I want. But at 30, by taking responsibility consistently, 2 Samuel chapter 5 and verse 4, David was 30 years old when he began to reign. Glory to God. <laughs> Woo. And he reigned 40 years. David? So he's not waiting for it. He's working at it. By taking practical responsibility <laughs> in the pursuit of every instruction from God. Every instruction from God. One of our daughters here had a team, a witnessing, so winning team, and they were just all out mad for Jesus. But they began to drop one by one. It remained herself. She refused to drop. <laughs> it got to a point she couldn't get food to eat anymore. Not even to so guide for supper. She has lost her job. But at the end of the day, got a multinational company appointment as managing director. She's not married yet. Sure. And left the country to go ahead her new company. <laughs> Wherever you see dignity, the underlying factor is responsibility. Wherever you see dignity, wherever you see accelerated dignity, it is concentrated responsibility that generates it. Thank you, Jesus. Well, this sensitive season of life is without prejudice, prejudice to divine verdict that could bring a man like Abraham out at 75, called for a man like Moses at 80. Now, those are special cases that are orchestrated by God himself. Amen. That's without prejudice to men like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who were children. As for these four children, so those boys were, they were teenagers. Praise God. They have not arrived at 20 before they began to cause katakata in Babylon. Praise God. But they had a quality walk with God. We will not defy ourselves with the case rich food. Look, we may be captives in body, we are not captives in soul. We have our God. We won't bow to any other God forever. If it means death, let's die. They just took covenant responsibility to secure their place in space. That's all we need to do. But as for the commandments and instruction of this book, it will never bend for anyone. For anyone. Hmm. There could be divine intervention at any point that would pick a man at 100 and repackage him. But the covenant 
provisions is these two great lifelines between 20 and 30 and between 30 and 50. Amen. If they ask my opinion, I know they won't ask. But nobody outside 50 should carry a name ballot box. <laughs> Anything you want to do, you have done it, you'll have done it by now. <laughs> it's not when you don't know what to do in your own private life. You now want to manage public life. <laughs> they shouldn't come near it at all. Amen. If I have a relation and he's 60, he wants to go, for, I will say, you are going on your own. I don't think Mungo will go with you because <laughs> what are you going to do there? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Glory to God. That you are just knowing now that you're going to police after you are 60. Where were you when you were 20? You are 40, you are not anywhere. You have never done local government before in your life. They say, what are you going to do? I'm going to be president. Ah, no, 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 take it easy. <laughs> take it easy. Praise God. Well, the good news is that the youths are the custodians of every generation. Youths are the custodians of every generation. The youths are the custodians of every generation. Joseph began to reign at 30. David began to reign at 30. Job found divine secret as a youth. And that made him the greatest businessman of his days. As I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was over my tabernacle. Amen. Divine secret will always distinguish his career. You can't assess divine secret without becoming a star. Amen. Because my ways are higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, verse 8 and 9. So you can't assess the ways of God without it showing, as I was in the days of my youth, when the secret of God was upon my tabernacle. So a star came alive by access to the secrets of God. A star came alive by access to the secrets of God. And that happened as a youth. Gideon was the least in his father's house, and there's no sign that he was married. Absolutely a youth, <laughs> because he delivered, uh, but he delivered the whole of Israel from the hand of the Midianites, the assault of the Midianites. He said, you will, you, will, you will deliver Israel as one man, one man. Judges chapter 6, verse 14 and 15, as one man. Don't say I'm a youth, as one man. I mean, he said, and the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might. And thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? He said, No, I'm the least in my father's house. And the Lord said unto him, Surely I will be with you, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man was a youth. And you know how he got there? He was burdened. Where is the God that our fathers told us? How long will this assault continue? How long are we going to be hiding away from the enemy? Because I found the one I'm looking for. And so he delivered Israel as one man. Glory to God. Glory to God. Nehemiah was a youth. He did not return to Jerusalem with any family. There's no such record. He didn't go back there to look for any family. He didn't have one. But see what came out of him. By taking responsibility over the afflicted, see how God turned them to their captain. And suddenly, he was appointed governor over the land. Praise God. But if you see all of these change of stories, they emanate from taking responsibility. They are not wishes to be big and important. They are just taking responsibility according to what pleases God. And God just elevated them. It's your season. 
And in the name of Jesus Christ, you won't sell off. Amen. You shall not sell off. Amen. This season will be much remembered all the days of your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The leaders of this charismatic movement that we are a part of in recent history were well, men and women such like Kenneth E. Egan or a robot and then um, uh, T.L. Osborne. They all pioneered ministry as teenagers. As teenagers. See the impact, see the import, see what's happening. These were amazing men whose lives have imparted me in many, many ways. We had men like Billy Graham, John Alexander Dowie, Kate and Coleman woman, John Wesley, and a host of others. Most of them launched out between 20 and 30. Amen. So we're in your season. We're in your season. Don't just be part of clapping and jumping. Get to, to be on key with God's agenda for your life and begin to invest maximally to every instruction that you receive. That's where your future is. Businessmen and career fellows that made serving God their priority in life, such as John D. Rockefeller, J.C. Penny, David Green, were all starters, early starters, sorry, early starters in their work with God. Early starters in their work with God. It's your turn. It's your turn. Amen. For instance, J.C. Penn, I mean, uh, uh, John Rockefeller's testimony, he paid tithe from his first paycheck in life. Tithe from his first paycheck in life. There are many young people today that don't know anything about tithing and they don't want to know. They have a software for dealing with a financial headache. And so the headache is turned to migraine. God forbid that it turns to brain tumor. I'm a die hard tighter. An unapologetic covenant practitioner. My life is a sacrifice, so there's something I have that is uh, more valuable than me. Praise God. And let me tell you, young people, I have never prayed for food in my life. I've never begged since Jesus showed me the way to go. I have never borrowed. If anybody says I did, ask him how much. And I'll pay him a thousand times over. You can start early and make the most of your future. You can start early. One cannot be truly dedicated to God and not be supernaturally distinguished on the earth. You can't be truly dedicated to God and not be distinguished on the earth. I made this illustration yesterday and I think it applies here. The mustard seed is the tiniest of all seed, but when it is sown. When it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all herbs and shoots out great branches so that the fowls of the air come to make their lodging under its shadow. <laughs> when it is sown, the tiniest of believer, when it's truly dedicated, it grows up. And becomes greater than all herbs, and now becomes a tree, not just a tree, a great tree, because it takes a great tree to, throw, to shoot forth great branch. Graduates from the herbs realm to the tree realm to the great tree realm, shooting out great branches. When it is so, when you don't know what your life is worth until you truly dedicate your life to Jesus and to the interest of his kingdom. You don't know what your life is worth. Amen. Pooh. Pooh, you don't know. 
Ame. <laughs> Michael Faraday became a man of renown in the field of science as a lab attendant, but a sold out soldier of Christ. Sold out soldier of Christ. So he became the envy of his professor while the man was still alive. The biographer said his thinkings were more logical than that of his prof. He got to any time, excuse me, where's the church here? He was a preacher. Now, his level of education should not make him even look anywhere else than to face his book until his eye drop. But grace came. Serving God elevates ordinary people. Being dedicated to his cause makes you a wonder to yourself, not even to the world, a wonder to yourself. A wonder to yourself. There are many of you hearing me tonight. At heaven's speed, it will turn you to a wonder to yourself. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Through the mystery of titan and kingdom investment, John D. Rockefeller became the first billionaire in American history. The first. The first. The first. There is this David Green that they call the greatest benefactor of the gospel. <laughs> Why? Dedication to God and to the interest of his kingdom. That's how life is. And I said before, testimonies are the most powerful, most authentic translation or interpretation of scriptures. Most authentic. Now, this is where we are going. In all labor, there is profit. All. Every form of kingdom stewardship carries profit. Every. You are an usher. You are a crowd control person. You serve as a statutory body members or committees and this and that. Everyone carries profit. In all labor, there is profit. But there is more profit in one than the other. Just like in the parable of the sower, the one that fell on good ground yielded three categories of results. Some 30-fold, some 60-fold, some 100-fold. That means the good ground is also in three categories. Amen. The good ground is in three categories. And we saw that clearly from um, uh, Romans chapter 12 and verse 2. It talks about, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may be able to prove that is no, what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Anywhere you find the good, there will be the better. You find the better, there will be the best. Praise God. So you should be able to prove which one is the best. The best of ground to invest into. Which one is the best of ground to invest for maximum returns. For maximum returns. For maximum returns. And without controversy. So many endeavors is the best of the best grants to invest into. Mm. Let me show you in clear terms from some few scriptures. Number one, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you that you go and bring forth fruit, that your fruit shall abide. Now whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. Open-ended favor. Open ticket favor. John 15, 16. Now, don't say there are four months and then come at harvest. Lift up now your eyes onto the fields. They are white only to harvest. And he that reap and receive wages. There is no other stewardship that talks about wages in the whole of scriptures. He receives wages 
as he gathers fruit unto life eternal. So that both he that sow it and he that reap it may rejoice together. So he gets on God's payroll. And that payroll does something. It delivers from lack and want. When I sent you and you went, lucky anything, they said nothing. Lucky anything, they said what? Nothing. Lucky anything, they said what? Nothing. When I sent you to go with the gospel to all the world and you went, did you lack anything? They said nothing. You lack protection? No. You lack health? No. You were attacked on the way? No. You got sick? No. You dreamt bad dreams? No. Did you lack anything? Nothing. Remember, I chose them that may send them to go and preach. So they were on so many engagement. Mark chapter 3, verse 14. Now, watch. He that winneth souls is wise. <laughs> Proverbs 11, 3. And um, by wisdom, kings reign. So, so when he makes kings out of believers, you are reigning as king in your feet of endeavor. Kings reign. So, a 24 year, 24 year old child can now become a guru that MasterCard is funding. Amen. Grant. Foreign grant. That the young lady that had no job will be interviewed and then uh, on online and be appointed MD, MD, CEO, multinational company. Rene, Rene, Rene. Now, number four, Daniel 12, and verse three. <laughs> they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament and they that torment to righteousness as the stars, as the stars forever and ever. So it makes stars of ordinary people. It makes stars of people without identity. It makes Look, can I tell you this? When Bartimaeus heard the footsteps of people, there were many, and heard their noise, because he was only blind, he wasn't deaf. Excuse me, what's going on here? They say, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Eh? The one that raised the dead? <laughs> is it clear? This opportunity will not pass me by, God forbid. Jesus! They say, shut up. Shut sure, what? <laughs> when you see a blind man running, what do you do? You clear. It will run over you. It will run over you. He sees the opportunity for a change of story. Can I ask you this, young men and women? Seize this mist of the year opportunity. The one for 2020 is only once. When it's gone, the next mist of year is 2021. You may be patient enough to wait. But you have the opportunity for a dramatic change of story by the quality of your engagement in pursuit of God's uppermost interest on the earth, the redemption of the soul of man. That is the platform for anyone imagined as a giant in the kingdom. Join this chariot. And join right now. There will not be another midst of the year this year. After June 26, we are done. Next midst of the year, 2021. If you are not ready for that one, 2022. You are not ready for that one, 2023. You are not ready at all, at all, 2030. <laughs> Amen. Wake up! And seize this opportunity. You know what Zacchaeus said? I must see Jesus. <clears throat> they say, You short man. Even tall people that are tall can't see him. He said, I must. Just leave me. 
He tried to find out which way is he passing through. <laughs> he located the tree that's very tall, taller than all of them who are making noise. So he climbed the tree. Jesus saw his heart. He got under the tree, looked up. Okay, what is he looking up to? He wasn't praying. He was looking for a man that must see him. A man that must see him. He said, come down, Zacchaeus. Today, I must salvation in that house. I'm going there. Ah! Ah! This short man, this is how Zacchaeus was. <laughs> he was all doing like this. <laughs> I got it. I got it. By seizing the opportunity. Well, um, where is your strength? If you can't get seven souls, and I've written to you, young man, because you are strong. Okay, where is your strength? When those of us who began this journey before you were born are still doing it, and then you are a youth, youth alive. <laughs> How alive are you? Without being able to produce seven, seven souls, you, you, you. That's why I came to NATO. You know, I've not been your explorer or something. This is what I came to explore. <laughs> said, you better wake up! At the age of 19, I said in that village, Jesus, I mustn't leave this place where I met it. Your name must be planted here. I was 19 years old, sir. There were no living churches where you go to like this. You finish in fellowship, that's the end. Every other church, you sleep and wake, and then they read the lesson, and then you go home. At 19, I was there 72 days. A church was planted, not seven people. A church was planted. A church was planted there. Now, the church was built. Glory to God. That's why you must wake up. At least seven standing souls, wherever you may be on this earth, listening to men and those who will capture it later. Seven, seven. I have no problem with your prayer telegram. I don't have a problem with it. But seven souls. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 That's what will make your chain meaningful. <laughs> <laughs> seven souls. Seven. Everybody from national youth pastor, continental youth pastor, global youth pastor, everybody delivers. <laughs> everybody, the drummers, the one calculating on the board. But that's not a substitute for seven souls that have been managing the studio. That's not seven souls. He didn't call seven, I mean, seven studio. Seven souls. <laughs> <laughs> seven souls. Everybody. Everybody. Seven souls. Minimum. 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 So if your fathers are doing 30 and you are youth alive, the giant is rising. <laughs> yeah, minimum seven, no? Minimum. Anybody that can't get seven, don't come to you. We're going to Edna's meeting. <laughs> you don't need to come here. Amen. I've written to you, young man, because you are strong. And the word of God abided in you. Overcome the wicked one. That's how it works. My team was out today. We are here to get the figure, but yesterday we had 312 or something. 312. So. The ball is in your court. So here is the conclusion of the whole matter. According to that, what my daughter presented from chapter 12, verse 13 and 14. We had the preacher in our church. That's the conclusion of every message. When he said, here is the conclusion of the whole matter, you know the someone has finished. You close your Bible. Fear God and keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring all works into judgment. And every secret thing, whether it be good or it be evil, with the grace of our God, Father, you know, that, that's the conclusion. That's whatever I've said since morning, this is the conclusion. Fear God, keep his commandment. For this is the whole duty of man. That's what it is. You never miss God's manifest, manifest presence around your life again. Yeah. Whosoever keeps my commandment is he that loves me. And he that loves me will love my father. And I will love him. 
and will manifest myself to him. It's your turn. It's your turn for a turnaround. It's your turn for a turnaround. This is the best of the best ground to invest your energy, your strength, and your resources. Your time and your resources. This is the best of the best ground. I conclude with Matthew chapter 13 and verse 23. But he that received seed into the good ground, he see that he heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth, bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. There is no labor without profit, but the profit is in categories. And the categories is in where you invest your time, energy, and resources. The most fruitful of all grants in spiritual stewardship is so winning and divorce. Both on the altar of prayer and in reaching out with all scriptural strategies available to us. Amen. You can chat with somebody unto salvation. That my daughter in US only twisted a man, and then that was it. He gave his life to Christ, and the rate of growth was enormous. The rate of growth was enormous and came out of coronavirus. As a testimony. He was already talking about the God of this commission. Somebody got saved just two weeks ago. Why? Every morning, every afternoon, every evening, reaching out to her convert. He said, I've never seen her. So we have an open platform to reach anybody. Why don't you tell them for all of our specialized services? <laughs> Next Sunday is a covenant day of favor. Come over. And you see how God lavishes his favor on these people. He comes over, gets saved. Amen? And then comes under that rainfall of, of favor. And then the story begins to change. And then it changes your story along. Can I hear your amen? amen? Whatever you make happen for others, God will always make happen for you. Don't let this opportunity pass you by. It is your father's business how much zeal and zest you invest into his business will determine how committed he will be to your business. So make your choice. Thank you, Jesus. Make your choice. There's someone in this church, I gave him his, the first tract in his life, 1969. He was the one sharing that testimony with me. And I insulted me when I did. Praise God. Himself and his entire family are members of this church today. <laughs> Amen. He's all wisdom in what he thought was foolishness before. After he has wasted so many years. Amen. Start now. And don't ever mistake any other engagement with this. This is what secures the future and keeps you going. Can I tell you what it does? It keeps you in the faith. It keeps you what? Not everybody in the faith yesterday is there today. It keeps you in the faith. You know what the word says? Very simple. It said, these three years I came seeking fruit of thee, and I found nothing. Cut it down. Why come back to the ground? He said, let alone this year also. And then if it bears fruit, yes. If it does not, then cut it down. So the future of every believer is being fruitful. It's in being fruitful. It's easy for anybody who's not witnessing to walk away from Jesus any day. But when you think of the people that God has used you to bring to him, and the impact of your walking away will be on them, you can't say yourself, no way, no way, I can't, I can't, I can't. That's the security in being fruit bearing. It keeps you strong in the faith. It keeps you going, no matter the roughness of the environment. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 19. You want to abide? You know what he said? Every fruit that bears enough fruit, he takes it away. <laughs> and every that bears fruit, he keeps fit so he can keep bearing more fruit. I pray you remain spiritually fit all the days of your life. There are people listening to me today that at 100, you will still be bearing forth fruit. You will call them and say, children, come. Let me tell you a story. 
I met a man, his name Jesus, some 78 years ago. He changed my story. Ah. Your life and destiny is not secured without him. I'd like to pray for you. Next Sunday, you follow me to church? You follow me next Sunday. In fact, you'll be the one to drive me. Pray this prayer after me. That would be like Paul the Apostle. By the help of God, I continue to this day witnessing. You always continue when you are a witness. He will keep you going. He will keep you in the faith. He will keep you stronger by the day. And that's your word. Has somebody caught his word right now? Amen. And let me tell you how easy that is. <clears throat> Witnessing operates on two platforms. Preaching the gospel to the lost. And secondly, inviting them to church. Luke chapter 14 is about inviting them. You are not preaching to them. You are just inviting and compelling them. John chapter 15 is about witnessing, preaching to them to receive Jesus. The other one is bringing them to Jesus to save them. Because the Lord that God in the midst of you is mighty. He will save whosoever comes there. Praise God. So if you can't preach, you can invite. So nobody's at, it, nobody's at, at a disadvantage. You can't preach, you can invite. Praise God. And when you invite and he saves, it renders your register. You are the one who brought him before Jesus could save him. So even if it's 50%, they give you something there. <laughs> Can I hear your amen? But everybody has the opportunity. There is a God, a redemptive potential within you to be a fruitful branch of the vine. Amen. And whether you led them to Christ or not, we still need to pray for them to be established. You invite them, you need to pray for them to meet Jesus that day. Praise God. And then you keep inviting them to make sure they are there to be washed by the blood, to be washed by the word, and be strengthened by the word of life. Amen. That's what makes every other thing we do to be fruitful. The good news is you are in for the best of time. Amen. Let me hear your loudest. Amen. Amen. Well, let me have uh, National Pastor come and read this quickly. Amen. Everyone all over the world, please listen to these testimonies. It will steer your faith. Remember, every testimony is a pointer to your heritage. You are the next one we'll be reading about. Amen. Go ahead. Number one, business and financial breakthrough. I joined this commission in August 2017, broken and hopeless. However, it's been two and a half years now, and the God of Bishop David Oedebo has continuously taken me through an adventure of glory. Last year in May, God blessed me with my first permanent job in one of the leading listed investment companies in East Africa as a manager. This job came in, came in exactly two years after I graduated from the university. Together with my new team of four, we developed a progressive web application to connect unemployed youths to their potential employers. Six months after its launch in 2019, the MasterCard gave us a grant worth $1.4 million to set 10 pilot job centers across Kenya. Also, God blessed me with my first car in 2019 on my 24th birthday. Secondly, due to the COVID-19 pandemic, our government banned all public gatherings, especially during food distribution, so as to curb the spread of the virus. However, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, we built a zero contact distribution system. The system is now helping government and other supporting organizations to be able to distribute food to the needy with minimal contact. Also, while I trusted God for a miracle through the innovative solution we had developed, 
I also connected online for all the services, including covenant out of prayer. When the bishop declared the post-resurrection encounter, I keyed into it, and Jesus showed up. The first week of May, the MasterCard Foundation again extended a grant with 36 million Kenyan shillings, more to support the just developed zero contact distribution system. Indeed, I have with my I have with my eyes seen Job 22:29. I return all the glory to God. Moa Brian is a testifier from Nairobi, Kenya. Amen. Number two, dramatic change of story via kingdom service. I attended Shiloh 2016 and I gave God a sacrifice which was equivalent to my full 2016 12 months gross salary. And God showed up in my life. In January, God blessed me with a multinational job with Microsoft Nigeria, where my monthly earnings was five times my monthly salary of 2016. Amen. I continued in my kingdom and financial stewardship towards the promotion of God's kingdom. Kingdom and financial stewardship. Towards the promotion of God's kingdom, as Bishop David Oedipo taught us, and my heaven has remained open. I gave my first fruit in January and set aside 20% for kingdom investment. From the 20%, 10% was my tithe, 5% was kingdom advancement seed, and 5% was my help seed to the needy around me, including my converts, as Bishop David Oedipo taught us to make a help list. As I part of this, as I part of as part of this, I also invested in transporting my converts to and from church. As a result, I got another job where my monthly salary is in foreign currency. To the glory of God, my monthly salary multiplied 31 times my salary when I came to Shiloh 2016. As ever seen, and ever since I resumed this new job, my salary has been increased twice. As if that was not enough, in 2017, I was listed by the World Bank as one of the four leading women in open data in Africa. Today, I am featured in Harvard, in Harvard curriculum, as a data champion in Africa, even though I graduated from University of Poracot with a 2-2. Lastly, I have been listed as a global shepherd of the World Economic Forum in Africa. I have come to say thank you, Heavenly Father, for changing my story. Come and give the Lord praise. Now, can you see that body? And a child shall lead them. All this happened before she was married. Please come in. You are the next in line. Amen. It doesn't take a century to experience a change. It takes a devotion, a commitment, a dedication to God and to the interests of his kingdom. Yes. Number three, God of this commission is faithful. In one of the services, God's servant prophesied that my slavery and servitude was over. I'm saying the same thing to you. Amen. Your slavery and servitude is over. Amen. Again, he said, God by divine favor is taking those without even a local identity and turning them into global superstars and power players. And that is you. Amen. Amen. You may not have identity anywhere, not even on the street where you live, but God is turning many to global superstars. Amen. I keyed into these prophecies. Today, I am here to give glory to God for his faithfulness in confirming his word in my life through his servant. I have, without writing any job application, been appointed the managing director of an international pub publicly listed company at the age of 34. Come on, give the Lord praise. Not only is my remuneration more than 1,000% increase from my previous company, but I am also a shareholder in this new organization. 1,000% increase and also a shareholder in the new organization. Yes. I have come to return all the glory, honor, and power to the Lord Jesus. 
Truly, what eyes have not seen nor ears heard have become the order of the day in my life. Akitunde JJ is a testifier. Give the Lord a beer of praise. Well, the good news is every testimony is ordained to reproduce itself. Some fellows have heard this, but you have heard me say again and again during this charge that it is taking responsibility that enhances a believer's dignity. Each of them keyed in to God, his word, and the instructions that came along with it. And then the beauty of the Lord came upon them. You are the next in line. Stand to your feet. Amen. One thing I'm very confident of is that from among you, God is raising an army of men and women that the world has never seen. Just take responsibility. One Mason said, John Milton, sorry, he said, as the morning shows the day, so the child shows the man. Just locate a responsible boy today, you have a giant in the making. That's where it works. Lift up your two hands and receive grace from God to make the most of this midst of the year prophetic season. Receive grace from God to make the most of this midst of the year prophetic season. My minimum seven abiding souls is guaranteed. Receive that grace. You can even mention the name, the number you are desiring to have. Jesus, I'm in the days of my youth, the days of my strength, the days of exploits. Help me to make the most of this season, Jesus. Do what only you can do in my life. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. Put your right hand on your forehead. None of the destinies under the sound of my voice and all members of the Utah Life Forum and everyone who came on to this service, none of your destinies is permitted to crash. Amen. No one shall end his journey in regret. Amen. None of you shall be a victim of sickness and disease. Amen. None shall be swallowed up by the wicked one. Amen. A good old age is your portion as you keep serving your God. Amen. No devil shall cut short on your lifespan. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I pray that the blessing that God has reserved for this season shall not elude you. Amen. The blessings reserved for this midst of the year 2020 shall not elude you. Amen. I pray that each one of us tonight will receive heaven's commendation. Amen. And when God commands, he changes people's stories. Your commendation shall be authenticated by your testimonies. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And so shall it be. Amen. Be blessed of the Lord. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Be blessed of the Lord. Amen. No one among you shall be cut off. Amen. You shall abide. Amen. You shall keep bearing fruit. Amen. Even until old age. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You shall keep bearing fruit. Amen. Even until old age. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. Now let me do these prayers before I leave. One. Maybe you are there. You have not experienced salvation by yourself. No one can repent on your behalf. Your parents' salvation is not transferable. 
Or maybe you are there just in the middle of the road. You are not dedicated. It's not that they say the you. You are just on your own. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus today. These two classes of people that may be part of our audience tonight, wherever you may be in the world, I'd like to pray with you. Because if you only know what is in it, if you only know what is in it, he said, come and taste and you will know that the Lord is good. If you only know what is in it, if you only know what's in it, you'll be sold out to it completely. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus? Or you want to give your life to Christ and be born again and become part of this great move of the Spirit where God is positioning children now to lead adults. Wherever you are, lift up your right hand and I'll pray this prayer. And you pray it after me. Say after me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I surrender my life to you tonight. To you tonight. Forgive, me. Forgive me all my sins. All my sins. Wash, me Wash me with your blood. With your blood. I believe you died for me. On the third day, you rose again that I may be justified. Right now, I believe my sins are now forgiven. I'm justified by your blood. I'm saved. I'm restored back to the faith. I'm now a child of God. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul in the name of Jesus. I cover everyone that prayed that prayer with the blood of Jesus. Remain covered till the day of his appearing. Grace to live the overcomer's life is imparted upon your life. Sin shall no more have dominion over you. And I pray that each one that prayed that prayer will make heaven at the end of his journey. None shall miss their steps in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. This season is your season of turnaround. In Jesus' precious name. Lift up your two hands. Everybody give God thanks. Give him thanks from the depth of your heart. Let's give glory to God. Let's appreciate him. Let's give him the praise that is due unto his name. Celebrate him from the depth of your heart. Give him praise. Give him glory. Give him honor. Give him adoration. Thank him from the depth of your heart for the encounter that we'll receive tonight. Our Father, we give you praise. We give you the glory. Blessed be your holy name. You are worthy of all praise. You are worthy of all glory. Thank you, mighty God. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' precious name, we have given thanks. Somebody believe, say a loud amen. For all those who prayed that prayer, please make sure you contact us through the various details that have been made available earlier. And let's know that you give your life to Christ and we keep rejoicing with you in the name of Jesus. Lift your hand to heaven and give God the glory one more time. Celebrate Jesus, give him praise, magnify him. Let him hear your voice tonight for all the blessings we've received. Let's thank him some more. Give him praise, magnify him, celebrate him. Shall we pray shortly that the Lord will refresh our father in the faith? Lift up your voice right now. That the Lord will refresh him, uphold him, strengthen him some more. Increase him exceedingly in the name of Jesus. Our father, we present your servant, your vessel before you, our father in the faith asking that your hand remains strong upon him. Lord, strengthen him. Increase him more and more. Revalidate.